golden age of turn-based strategies. Yes, we're talking about strategy games today, folks, and no, we're not talking about real-time strategies, so please don't give me any hate. I love my real-time strategies, okay? Solaris is one of my favorite games of all time, but no, today we are talking about turn-based strategies because they hold a special place in my heart, and I firmly believe that we are in the golden age of turn-based strategies. They are the best they've ever been, and honestly, I don't know how much better they can get. But that's just me, I guess I'm just creatively bankrupt. 4X games are such a special game type to me. There is just something so alluring to the idea of exploring, expanding, exploiting, and exterminating. This is a genre that is very much unlike what a lot of other AAA studios are doing. Instead of stagnating or regressing, they are just getting better and better and better and better. Every new turn-based strategy game I see come out builds on the last one, and it is such a cool thing to see. And I'm excited to see where it goes, but right now I think we are in the start of the golden age of turn-based strategies. So there are going to be four games I'm talking about today. One of them I have never played before <laughs> at all. Two of them are two of my favorite games that I will play anytime. If I'm in the mood for turn-based strategies, these are the two games that I go to. And then one of them I found out about recently, and it's so cheap that I just, I had to try it and found out it was pretty good. Very good introduction for turn-based strategies for people who are intimidated by it or don't really want to dedicate the time, dedicate the time, or people who don't really want to dedicate the time to learning or to playing a full game out. So the four games are Old World, which is the game I have never played before, Ozymandias, which is the cheap kind of introductory game to turn-based strategies, and then the two games that I love, Humankind and Age of Wonders 4. And if you've ever played any of the civilizations, all of these games will look very familiar to you. You know, it's the same kind of grid layout, the same kind of army movement, city building. It's effectively the same gameplay loop across the board, but each of them brings something very unique to the table in such a way that it is a very different experience playing each of these games, one of which I have never actually played. Why? Not you stupid bastard. So the first one we're going to talk about is we're just going to rip the bandaid off right now and talk about Old World, the game that I should have absolutely no opinion on. But for some reason, I'm including in this list because I just thought it was so freaking cool. So the way that I found out about this game is I subscribed to this guy called Potato McWhiskey, and he plays a lot of turn-based strategy games. Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here. He's a big Civ 6 YouTuber, and he does a lot of really cool stuff with that game. But I saw him playing this game called Old World, and I wanted to check it out. And what I saw was captivating. This game is like a mix between Civilization and Crusader Kings, where you have dynasties and lineages and there's family drama and it really functions like an RPG in the civilization format. This game was designed by Soren Johnson, which is the guy who designed Civilization 3 and 4, so he's got experience. And Civilization 4 is very popular among the Civilization fandom. There are people who hold that Civilization 4 was the best civilization ever made. I've never played it, so I have no opinion on that. Even though I've never played Old World and yet somehow I have an opinion on this. You're not an intellectual. You're a fake and a fraud. But when I found out about it, it was actually part of the reason why I wanted to make this video was because everything that I saw was amazing. And I had come in with the knowledge of humankind and Age of Wonders, and I thought, those two games are outstanding. They are near perfect, in my opinion, for turn-based strategy games. And then when I saw this, I just thought, we are in such an amazing time for these genre of games. There are so many details crammed into this 4x. One of the first things that I saw, which I think a lot of people might really appreciate, if, especially if they're history buffs, is this mechanic that your leaders have a lineage and you have to have an heir set up to inherit power from you and continue on the empire. You and your children can accrue passive perks over the time, making them better for technology research or governing, army control and creation, kind of like a standard leveling system you see in a lot of really good strategy games like Stellaris. And the only other turn-based strategy game I've seen this in is Age of Wonders. But with your lineage, with your dynasty, you can arrange marriages with foreign empires and forge alliances and trade 
deals and things of that nature. So it's really a deep seated historical turn based strategy. And there are so many aspects to it that I have probably not even seen in the short time that I've observed it. And if I had money, oh man, if I had money, I would lose my time in that game. We just need money. This is a game that I haven't even played. And I know just from seeing someone else play it, that if you are a fan of turn-based strategies, if you're willing to put in the time, the effort to learn, then this is a game that I would urge people to try and see what it's about. Might be the new next game that you love. Like I said, if you like Crusader Kings, if you like Civilization, if you just like history, this is such a compelling game to get. All right, moving on. I've spoken enough about a game that I don't know anything about. Ozymandias. I don't know what that word means, but it sounds cool. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works in mighty and despair. This is a very simplified turn-based strategy game. Imagine it being like the diet version of Civilization, but do not let the surface level simplicity deceive you. This game is subtly complex. There are a lot of different facets to it that make it a bit challenging to really get the hold of and really get the hang of. But once you get the hang of it, you start rolling and you start really feeding into this cycle of addiction. But no, it is extraordinarily complex relative to how compact it is. I'm not trying to say that it's the most complex game ever, but considering this is a game you could get away with playing on your phone or tablet, there's a lot to it for turn-based. Now this game is Bronze Age only so there's really no progressing in through the science tree into like future era or the modern era it's really just about the bronze age and there's not really much combat you build armies to exercise power and influence over territories which you expand your borders with the combat for this game is really one dimensional but it's still engaging if you have multiple neighbors but it really does have all of the necessary facets for a 4x you know you got your well actually it doesn't have exploration so it's a 3x game ha <laughs> But no, you got your expansion, you've got your exploitation of the resources and not the workforce and extermination of your neighbors, if that's what you want to do. In the place of a dedicated tech tree, you have these RNG opportunities that kind of serve as technologies. You get to choose between two of them each turn, and then that allows you to get these temporary buffs, and some of them are more powerful and a little more permanent. So it's a very simplified, very watered down turn-based strategy experience, but for the simplicity, it's very fun and very addicting, and, and it does well to give a quick hit of that turn-based experience. And it serves as a really good introduction for people who might be intimidated by the whole turn-based strategy or strategy game idea in general. So if you've never played turn-based strategies, this is definitely one that I would recommend to you. It's cheap, it's accessible, the onboarding is relatively easy compared to most other strategy games. I don't know if I should include a rating system, but uh, if I do, I guess I would give this game like eight Sid Meier's out of 10. Humankind. That's a word that I understand. Humankind, humankind, where to begin? This game was published by Sega of all studios and it has become very quickly one of my most beloved strategy games of all time. This game is so detailed and so beautiful, and this game really is a love letter to anyone who wants to play the historical turn-based strategy. It was developed by Amplitude Studio, which is a very small, relatively speaking, studio. They have around 180 employees total, and they did a bang-up job with this game. When it was coming out, it was known as the Civ Killer, and honestly, for me, it worked. It did its job. It killed Civ in my eyes. I wouldn't say it completely killed it, but I would much rather play Human kind than I would civilization at this point in my life. But civilization still holds a very special place in my heart, and I eagerly await what civilization has in store in the wake of humankind, Age of Wonders, Old World. There's a lot of big shoes to fill. But humankind is probably the closest to civilization in this list. It's very similar to civilization in a lot of ways, just in the general overall gameplay loop of it. But there are a 
plethora of design changes that really make this game stand out. First and foremost are these kind of RPG events that take place within your empire depending on what kind of decisions you make, what kind of political leanings you have, which is another one you can change your political stance just by the decisions that you make in these RPG elements, in these RPG events that take place. So you can become more authoritarian, you can become more egalitarian, you can become more communal, communistic kind of way of thinking, or capitalistic, and that's all dependent on the kinds of civics that you choose to run your government with or the kinds of choices you make in these events that pop up. Depending on your choices, you might make a more capitalistic choice to start investing funds into this, or you might make a more traditional approach to kind of go towards superstitious beliefs and fear the gods rather than relying on research and science to guide your empire. But another one of the major differences between this game and Civilization is the way that you progress through the eras in the way that you play out your specific culture or empire. So you don't start the game choosing an empire like, say, the Roman Empire, the Egyptian Empire. You start off as nomads, just wandering around trying to grow your tribe and survive. And then once you get past the Neolithic era, then you choose your culture, which is the empire. So then you can choose the Egyptians, you can choose the Harapins, you can choose the Assyrians, you can choose all these different empires and they have more in the DLC. But then once you get through that era, then you go on to the next era and then you can choose from the Romans or you can choose if you chose the Egyptians in the last one, you can choose to be the Egyptians again. There's so many different choices in each era and it's really cool to see how it progresses. And these two facets really underscore specifically how much of an RPG this game can function as. You can play this game in a lot of different ways. One, you can play to maximize efficiency and just build the craziest empire, the most domineering empire you can, or you can play to your RPG elements and you can choose to only make these pacifistic choices. You can choose to play as a pure capitalist or a pure traditionalist, or you can choose to play as an empire that only existed in the Mediterranean or only existed in Africa or in Mesoamerica. And this is another game that is very addicting in my eyes. It's very engaging and very compelling. And one of the other things that makes it so engaging is the way that the combat works. It's a very involved combat system. Instead of like civilization where you just have units, you have armies. And your army can, depending on what era you're in and what empires you've chosen, contain anywhere from one unit to all the way up to I don't even know how many. Maybe 10 is the max, but usually at the beginning of the game it's between 1 and 4 and then each era you progress with more text that you research, you can add more units into your army. So then first era you might start with several armies of four units each. Later on, you'll have several armies of seven units each scattered around the map. But then when you get into an actual fight with another army, the area closes off and now all those four units are spread out all across the map and you have to fight with each of those units and it's very involved. You really have to play to the elevation of the landscape and it really brings the world to life. It makes things like positioning extremely important. If you get attacked from the high ground, you're in a little bit of trouble and you might need to reposition or call in more troops to help reinforce. There are so many things that set this game apart from Civilization, which seems to be where it got most of its inspiration from. Everything from the city building to the resource effects, acquisition of territory, and the way alliances work between neighbors. These are all elements that are present in Civilization, but the way that humankind goes about working them into the game is very, very unique. It's also a very, very difficult game to get through because of the amount of crashing that takes place in it, which is unfortunate. This is on Xbox at least, I play mainly on Xbox, but this is another game that I love so much that I bought twice, once on Steam and once on Xbox. Gee, I wonder why I don't have any disposable income. You're a fucking idiot. But I have never actually finished a full long game on Xbox because it just crashes every time I get near the end. I don't know if it's a hardware thing with Xbox, if it just can't handle the amount of units that are on the map near the end of the game, or if it's an optimization thing from Amplitude Studios. I don't know what the problem is, but they're aware of it and it's a very unfortunate thing to see, but hopefully one day I will be able to finish a game of humankind on Xbox. But the developers of this game did an absolutely terrific job making this game and I'm more than happy to give them my money. Age of Wonders 4. Oh wait, I have to give a rating for the last one. Um, 9 Sid Meier's out of 10 because it crashes so much.
damn close to that perfect score. Age of Wonders 4. Oh, Paradox Studios, the things that you do to me. Paradox Studios is absolutely on a roll right now. Only five years ago, in 2019, Paradox came out with Stellaris, the grandest of grand strategy games that one can imagine. I could make an entire series of videos just talking about this game and the things that are in it. And those videos would go on for hours. And this is what Paradox is capable of. They also have several turn-based strategy games with Age of One. I mean, this is the fourth edition, and they've had other spin-offs like Age of Wonders Planetfall, which is also a very good game. But when Age of Wonders 4 came out, something special happened. The old tech tree was broken. The standard, boring, linear progression of the tech through the eras was gone. And they introduced something very, very cool, very unique, very compelling, and very much akin to an RPG. They introduced tomes it's beautiful it's i've i've never seen oh, no, 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 this is a game that is the closest thing to an rpg that you can get in a turn-based strategy game if you're a fan of lord of the rings game of thrones the witcher the elder scroll skyrim oblivion morrowind really anything medieval fantasy if you're a fan of anything dungeons and dragons anything Medieval Fantasy. This is the perfect game for you. There are so many different ways that you can play this game. Do you want to be the guardians of light and making the purest of choices and defending the lands and defending your neighbors and fighting for good and vanquishing darkness? You can do that. Do you want to just be a humble sideliner who's just happy to trade and build and expand as much as they can and explore and discover? You can do that. Do you want to be a rabid explorer who is going out to the ends of the earth looking for the coolest things that they can see? You can do that. And oh my gosh, there are so many cool features that you can find and discover and see. Do you want to be the Dark Lord Sauron? calling upon the rings of power to build a massive army of orcs large enough to take on and destroy the entirety of all of your enemies, you can do that. This turn-based strategy is an RPG. There is no question about it. There is no debate about it. This game is a turn-based strategy that has taken on the form of a role-playing game. It is probably the coolest turn-based strategy I have ever seen. Like I mentioned before, the way that they did the tech tree was so unique and innovative. It was just perfect. It was perfect for the game, for the setting, and it was perfect for a refresher for anyone who's played turn-based strategies and is sick of the old tech tree, the old way the tech tree works, and it really gives life to the RPG elements of the game. Now again, like Humankind, this game has the RPG events that take place and the choices you make determine how good or evil you are, and they can give you certain rewards, or maybe not. Maybe you just want to be pure good, and the only thing you get from that is moral goodness. But the combat is very similar to Humankind, where you have armies composed of individual units. You can have individual units, but generally you would put them in these armies. But these armies are capped out at six, so every army is only going to have six units in them. But unlike any of the other games, you have heroes. Each city that you have, you can get another hero. And these heroes fight inside the armies. They're a part of your fighting force. And this is, again, where the RPG elements come to life. You can level up your heroes and get them all kinds of perks and passives and new abilities. And you can go out and hunt for items for them. You can give them better armor, better weapons, better trinkets or rings. Your heroes can be mages. They can be warriors with a sword and shield. They can be mounted cavalry type units, which again, you can use either a mage on a horse or a warrior on a horse. In your mounted units, they're not even restricted to horses. You can get unicorns. You can get dark horses. You can get wolves. You can ride on spiders and you can ride on wyverns. There are so many different cool features to just this one aspect of the game. Paradox is one of the most cracked out strategy gaming studios I have ever seen. They just come out with 
banger after banger. And one of the coolest things about that, if you're playing with friends, and if your friend has all of the DLC for a game that you want to play together, you don't even have to buy that DLC. You can just hop in the game that they're hosting and they'll turn on all the DLC and you can experience all the DLC. And then if you want to go out and buy it and play it for yourself, you can do that. Or you can just leech off of your friend forever. When this game came out, I was hesitant to try it. I was seeing people on the internet play it and say that it was one of the most amazing games they've ever played, but I didn't actually go out and buy it. And then my friend was playing it and he told me to get it. And I said, I don't really have money for that. <laughs> he bought the game for me. That's how good it was, was he was willing to buy it for me. You just off your friend forever. I am so thankful that he did that because this is one of the best games I have ever played. <laughs> Now, something that all these games have in common is they're played on hex tiles. And the history of hex tiles in gaming goes all the way back to 1842 in London in a game called Agon. Or Agon? Or Agon? 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 Now, I don't know anything about this game, but apparently it's a strategy game. What do you know? But for anyone who wants to thank someone for the hexagonal tile strategy game, thank Anthony Peacock of London for creating Agon, the hex tile strategy game between two players that kind of looks like chess, but I don't really know anything about. Not an intellectual, you're a fake and a fraud. The turn-based game genre has evolved so far and so rapidly from what it once was. You know, it feels like just in 2016, not even that long ago, Civilization VI came out. It's a good game, but it's very simplistic compared to the games that I've listed here in this video. It really is just that bare bones explore, expand, exploit, exterminate to 4X games. With the new edition of all these games coming out, they have really raised the bar for 4X games. Mr. Cameron! People should know how you saved us all, how you raised the bar, how will they know what a hero you are? James Cameron doesn't do what James Cameron does for James Cameron. James Cameron does what James Cameron does because James Cameron is James Cameron. And they've made it so that they're not just about empire building and expanding. Of course, that's the gameplay loop. But now it's become so much more involved. They have evolved into RPGs where the player can decide how they want to play. All these games, you can just play to maximize efficiency and win the game as quickly or as effortlessly as possible. Or you can pick a specific motif that you want to emulate and play the game like that and see where it takes you. And that's what makes these games so compelling. But they're not just about the 4X formula. They have become so much more. Obviously, the 4X formula is still what defines these games, but you can throw that by the wayside and play however the heck you want to, just to get the desired outcome. If you haven't played any of these games yet, I would highly encourage you to try at least one of them. If you're intimidated by turn-based strategies or you just don't want to learn how to play them, Ozymandias. My name is Ozymandias. That's a very good introductory strategy game. And then if you don't like it, hey, well... A very cheap game so you really haven't lost much but your time if you're a history buff and you want to get right into the heart of it then humankind is the game for you but again if you're kind of intimidated by the prospect of learning that game but you still want to experience that historical gameplay of humanity evolving over time in their empires and civilization 6 is still a great game to play and try out and i would recommend it to anyone who wants to play turn-based strategy games and if you're a fan of fantasy medieval genre Age of Wonders is just the absolute perfect game for you. But if you've never played turn-based strategies before, I would highly recommend giving one of these games a try because it is my firm belief that right now, we are in the beginning of the golden age of turn-based strategies and I am so excited to see what comes next. If you made it this far, smash that subscribe button like you would smash the gates of your enemies and I'll see you on the battlefield. Take care, y'all. Thank you.